Hey all here OS Reviews, you're watching our hands-on review of the Treblab E3. These are ANC or active noise cancelling over-the-year style headphones that sell for around 70 bucks. So it's fairly inexpensive, a fraction of what you pay for a Bose QuietComfort headset for instance, and competes with other less expensive ANC headsets from companies like Soundpeats, uh, Blue Dio, for instance, with their Turbine series, so on and so forth. What makes these special, though, is it has a few tricks up its sleeve that, that many of the other more generic pairs simply lack. For one, it offers really fast charging. Just five minutes of charging can provide up to 10 hours of music listening, which is insane. It also has one of the longest lasting battery lives that I've seen yet. Uh, it will last for upwards of 50 hours when you're listening to them in Bluetooth mode. And when you have the ANC turned on, the number is close closer to 30 hours, but that's still significantly longer than the majority of other Bluetooth headphones we've seen by uh, over 10 to 20 hours. Another interesting element for the E3 is they have what's called a environmental mode, which is very similar to an ambient or transparency audio mode that uh, we also saw on the Liner NC80s. Essentially, if you don't want to have the active noise cancellation completely you know, block out all noises, you can activate this environmental mode to still allow some human voices and conversations to leak in without removing these from your head necessarily, which is, again, interesting and a feature that the majority of other low-cost ANC headphones lack. Anyways, inside we have a hard shell carrying case, which includes a strap in addition to a lanyard hook. Headphones are resting on their back when you first open it up, which is a little interesting, but um, otherwise we also have access to the charging cable. It uses a standard USB Type-C reversible cable, but more importantly, there's also an adapter cable included that transforms USB Type-C to a standard 3.5 millimeters if you want to use these as wired headphones. But more importantly, this signifies that there is no built-in standard 3.5 millimeter auxiliary jack on these headsets. So you have just one Type-C port that you have to transform into 3.5 millimeters if you want to use them as wired. So actually that's the same decision that Blue Dio made on their Turbine T6 and T7s. It also got rid of the auxiliary jack completely and has only one Type-C port. I would still like to see a standard headphone jack to be completely honest on headsets just because I think there's plenty of room here and um, having to carry a proprietary adapter is not going to be the most convenient thing. But if you are sure that you're going to be using these primarily as wireless headphones, then it's not going to be something that concerns you too much. Lastly, these are IPX4 rated, so they will be sweatproof and light rainproof. So if you're wearing them outdoors, in the gym, they will still survive. All right, so taking a closer look at the design next, the E3s do look more expensive than the price would suggest with this oversized Treblab logo on the front, which is coated in aluminum and kind of shimmers when it shines against the light. The body of the headphones are made out of a polycarbonate plastic that keeps it relatively light, but doesn't feel too flimsy or cheap. And then the headband on the very top here is well padded by memory foam and says Treblab. Now the kind of band itself is also constructed out of aluminum, so again, Pretty solid in terms of the build for a relatively inexpensive pair. Now one thing I will say though is that these headphones don't fold inwards. This is as flat as they go. So because these are already over the year style headphones, they are a little on the large side. We can have these next to the aforementioned Blue Dio Turbine T7s. And you can see that the cup size of the T7s and the E3s are pretty similar. The E3s do have a more ear-shaped uh, cup, as you can see here, that is more of an oval that fits over your ears and uh, feels quite comfortable when you're wearing them compared to the square shape of the turbines. If we put it against something that's more of an on-ear style, like the Liner NC80s, you can see the difference there is pretty dramatic. So again, by no means these are going to be the smallest, but uh, they are very comfy uh, because of the added padding. Otherwise, on the bottom here, we have the controls, including a center play pause key and a volume keys. And then on the side here, we have a power key that you can tap on once to turn it on. And by default, it will begin in the auto pairing mode. One thing I will say, though, is the power key here has a very shallow feedback. So it's a little bit um, not the most tactile button in the world. Uh, the action here feels quite different, for example, from the volume keys, which are much more clicky. And then same thing goes with the other side, the noise cancellation key that you can tap on is very clicky and responsive, but the power key is more mushy by contrast. Now on the other side here, the aforementioned ANC key can be tapped on once for ANC to be turned on. We see that green light. 
tap on it again, and it will go into that aforementioned environmental mode. And then once more, we'll turn the function completely off to also preserve on batteries. So moving into audio quality and performance, the E3 definitely punches above its price point. They have excellent clarity and surprisingly strong bass, uh, which again, for over the ear style headphones, it's always gonna be already a little bit better than say small TWS buds because the driver on here is many times larger, but they're very thumpy. And uh, even if you're not listening to an EDM track or bass boosted track, it already kind of punches you as you are listening to a drum beat. So if you're a bass head, if you love low frequency sounds, if you kind of want it to rumble, this is definitely going to please you. At the same time, it never feels out of control. It still has a great balance with the mids and trebles. Just gives you a very dimensional sound. The sound stage is nice and expansive. Feels like you're in a really open space when you're listening to these with very little hints of digital noise or distortion. If you strain your ears, uh, it's a very, you know, again, hard to hear that sibilance. For the most part, it is gonna be quite clean sounding and uh, just the music that you'll be listening to. The connectivity was also quite stable in my testing. I had no problems in terms of walking around a room while the phone was on my desk and it still stayed connected without any issues. Now, technically, I think it is using a Realtek Bluetooth 5.0 chip, so it's not using, say, a Qualcomm APTX chip for the lowest latency, but it does support codecs like SBC and AAC for iPhones. Finally, moving into the active noise cancellation component, I would say that the ANC is indeed pretty effective. It's on par with the kind of sound peats, the Tautronics, as well as the Blue Dio turbines in terms of their effectiveness, which is to say, it's good as far as budget ANC headphones are concerned. I would say it blocks out perhaps 90% of noise, but it's not quite to Bose's quiet comfort levels as expected. So it's not gonna really get you 99% you know, of noise blocked out. Uh, but for things like a fan in the background, an air conditioner unit, or if you're on an airplane, it does dramatically reduce the engine noises, allowing you to rest as well as to listen to music in more comfort. It's also worth pointing out that with ANC turned on, the sound signature isn't affected, which is pretty rare for ANC headphones. A lot of them often will bump up the bass as well as change the sound um, balance when it's flicked on. But on these, it still sounds the same whether it's on or off, uh, which is to say the strong bass carries over, but it's not further emphasized. And again, we get a very consistent listening experience with it on or off. Not really a huge jump in volume either, which is good. Um, it feels quite stable. Now the environmental mode, I would say, is a little more subtle than I was expecting. It's not quite as dramatic as on the liner NC80s, uh, not quite as dramatic as ambient mode on, say, the Mifo 05s. Uh, those you can really hear it, the noise around you being amplified when you activate it. On this, uh, you know, more noise will creep in, but it seems like ANC is still partially on in the background. It just kind of filters out less of a higher frequency sounds like people's voices, but the low frequency sounds are still being filtered or canceled by ANC. Uh, so the magnification isn't super dramatic or super obvious, but uh, indeed you can hear some human voices a little easier than in the standard ANC mode. So that's more or less it as far as our hands-on review of the Treb Lab E3. Overall, I would say for the price, 70 bucks. I've seen it on sale even for less than that. Uh, this is my favorite budget ANC wireless headphones of 2020. So if you want a pair of ANC headphones with already just really great sound, even if it didn't have ANC, I would still recommend it. Uh, definitely take a closer look at the E3s from Treb Lab. You can check out more details if interested in the links down below. Thanks for watching here at OS Reviews.